In the wake of the revolutionary changes in Yemen, three camps fighting it out. One led by Yemen's new president and prime minister, they promised to fulfill the goals of the revolution while fighting Al-Qaeda and separatists at the same time. Another camp headed by former president Ali Abdullah Saleh himself. Yes, he was forced out of office but still exercises influence behind the scenes. And in the third camp, activists who say they'll never stop protesting until the revolution is complete. So how is this struggle on so many fronts playing out? Who is winning? What is the role of outsiders, the United States, Iran and Al-Qaeda? Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, two influential Yemeni citizens. The man who runs the new government, the Prime Minister Mohammed Basundwa, and one of his fellow revolutionaries, a woman who continues her work outside the government structure, Nobel Peace Prize winner Tawakkul Karman. November 23, 2011. In a deal brokered by the Gulf Cooperation Council, Yemen's President Ali Abdullah Saleh is out. There's a new head of government, Prime Minister Basundwa. He'd fought President Saleh for years. Later on, a new president is also appointed, Abdurrahman Mansour al-Hadi. He came from the other side. He'd served President Saleh as vice president. The two heading a transitional government with this goal in mind, creating a new constitution and holding elections in 2014. But will they succeed? In the south, there's the problem of al-Qaeda, fighting government forces for control of important towns. In the north, the Houthi rebels. They're Shiites that, according to the United States at least, are receiving support from the Iranians, who see the separatists in the north as useful conduits to gain political influence in the region. In addition to that, there's the everyday struggle of Yemen's people. Poverty is widespread. It's especially bad in the south. The part of the country that ever since North and South Yemen were united has been in particularly bad shape. Separatists there are calling for the South to break away again. And as if that isn't enough, remember these pictures, the troops that opened fire against protesters, many of them still not brought to account. That includes the former President Saleh himself. Well, all of this is causing protesters to continue their calls for justice. So when we met the country's new prime minister, the first question was natural. You have um, a transition of power process going on in Yemen. Do you think that transition of power is meeting the aspirations of the Yemeni people? Not fully, but uh, it's not bad. It's uh, helping in, I mean, uh, in achieving the comprehensive change that people yearn to. The protests are going on. What, can, what more can you do? to meet their demands at this point? Well, we cannot, I mean, uh, respond to all their demands, but uh, so far we have done something good and they are happy about the government. But if they're happy, sir, one of their demands, for example, is they want to see some people brought to justice over the killing of protesters. Well, uh, you know about the uh, uh, immunity law. You heard yes, about that it. was part of the, yeah, the and deal. Yeah, I was the one who introduced that law to the parliament. And uh, the parliament agreed. Do you think it should be revised, though, since the protests no, are going not, on? Uh, that, that the immunity will not, uh, I mean, uh, be applied to all. It's only limited. Huh? It seems the protesters want the former president, though, Ali Abdullah Saleh, to face justice. Is that something that you could ever consider under your administration? Well, uh, we are bound, uh, I mean, uh, to abide by the uh, GCC initiative and by the uh, uh, mechanism. So that is out of the question? Uh, if, I mean, uh, nothing happens. If he doesn't do anything, I don't think it will be possible, I mean, uh, 
to lift up the immunity. But can former President Saleh still influence the country? It's not a theoretical question. In fact, his son and one of his nephews still hold high military positions. Is the former president still in control of your country? No, I don't think so. He has got some forces, he has got a lot of money, of course. But that does not mean that he is in control. He can, he's, I mean, uh, they can create for us some problems, but they cannot, uh, I mean, uh, uh, change the situation. Because the whole world is behind the uh, GCC initiative and the uh, executive uh, mechanism. Does he have still too much political influence, though, that perhaps you'd like to see reduced. Some say he pulls the strings through his relatives, which are still in powerful positions. They he pulls the strings behind the scenes. They are still controlling some military units, but that does not mean that the people are with them. Will there be further moves then, since, as you said, he still controls some of the military units? Will there be further moves to remove some of his relatives, some of his allies out of those units? I can't uh, answer this question because it depends on the president of the new president of the Republic. I mean, uh, he can take any decision, he can issue any decree whenever he wants and the whole world uh, will, uh, will support him. And this is definitely like last time. I also signed those uh, decrees with him as Prime Minister. All right, and since you signed the decrees, I'm interested in knowing your feeling, even if it's not your decision. Do you think Yemen really needs to remove people like the son and the nephew of Ali Abdullah Saleh from some of these powerful military units? Well, uh, I mean, uh, first we have to start restructuring the army eh, and the security forces. Mm. Uh, and when we, uh, I mean, uh, go to that stage, I think there will be uh, changes. Some uh, military leaders will have to move to other units. They, sh they shouldn't stay as commanders of their units as before. You know, some people are uh, um, controlling some units for 25, 30 years. It's too much. So later on, you think people like his son and nephew should be removed? Well, uh, that will come. Uh, they have to be ready to accept that whether they like or not. But does the whole world, as the Prime Minister puts it, accept the current agreement, including the immunity deal for the former president? When I spoke to the Prime Minister, Mohammed Basindwa, he said Ali Abdullah Saleh is not going to face court. How do you feel about that? Did he say that? Yes. He's wrong. I think he's wrong because... Um, well, that's the terms of the agreement that brought him out of power. Why is he wrong? It's the agreement that, they, that the political parties, they did what uh, people, they refused that. So are you we, going to change that agreement? Can you change that agreement? By of course, of course, and not just we. I think all the international community, they, it's their uh, responsible to, to, to refuse that because some, that's something against human rights. That's something against anti-corruption values, against anti-corruption treatments, international anti-corruption uh, treatments. They, these people, they killed the uh, people in the streets. And how they, did they give them forgiven? This is one of the mistakes that the political parties did when they uh, signed to the uh, Gulf Initiative. When you give some, somebody immunity or forgiven, especially if he, are, if he is in the uh, political life, you have to say to tell him that he has to leave the power. Ali Saleh and his uh, people, they didn't leave power. Most of the uh, Ali Saleh people, they are now in the power and they have immunity. What do you make and what do the protesters make of the new president and the prime minister? Are you confident that they are sincere people who will try to achieve the values and goals of your revolution? Yes, we, we support them and we're confident that they are with us. Uh, but we're confident in ourselves more than them because without us, they will not do anything because the power now is with Ali Saleh family because they are, they lead the, uh, uh, the army and uh, security forces. We are looking for transi transitional justice. 
What do you mean by transitional justice? It's the right of the victim to know the truth. Outside the goal of transitional justice, there's the problem of creating peace. Many fear the new government has an almost impossible job. But when we asked the Prime Minister about this, he told us a story. I'll just tell you a joke. I mean, Churchill met his Irish counterpart at one time during, after the World War, Second World War, and he was talking to him about the situation in the United Kingdom. Churchill said to his Irish counterpart that the situation in the United Kingdom is serious but not hopeless. The, his Irish counterpart said to Churchill that the situation in, the, uh, in Ireland is uh, hopeless but not serious. <laughs> but um, I guess then you don't agree with those who have been talking for a while, haven't they, about the possibility of a breakdown in Yemen. Is civil war inevitable? No, it's not inevitable. We can avoid that, definitely. We can evade that. Let's talk a little bit about Al-Qaeda. Are they making a comeback in places like Abiyan? Well, uh, they are there in Abiyan and some other places, but I don't think they can uh, rule Yemen. It's rather difficult for them. Huh? Maybe they can carve out an area for themselves. That seems to be what Even, their latest I, attacks are aimed I, I don't think they can, uh, they no. can control any area in Yemen forever. It's rather, it's Yemen uh, is quite different than Afghanistan. Can you crush Al-Qaeda? Well, we will uh, try, I mean, to uh, uh, let them give up their, uh, I mean, uh, struggle and join others if they are ready to join, even to participate in the national, uh, a comprehensive national dialogue. Uh, and, but they have stopped all their activities. We, we are against terrorism. We don't want Yemen to be another Afghanistan this is, or another Somalia. This is definite. But that's exactly what the former President Saleh wants, at least according to Tawakkal Karman. She says Al-Qaeda is just a tool of the former president. He used Al-Qaeda for make uh, uh, unstable, uh, instability in, uh, in the south. He used also uh, 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 the army, the army uh, forces um, movement in Yemen. He, he, he made many problems in Yemen, but we don't care about all his problems. We, we know that uh, it's just time and we are continuing our, uh, our struggle and he will be accountable يعني, uh, soon. Why do you think the former president wants to keep Yemen unstable today. He promised that uh, if he will leave the power, that he will make the Yemen will be Somalia, and he promised that the Yemen will enter to the civil war. And so you he think he's trying to he's prove that he was right? That Yemen can't survive without him. He's trying to do that, and he, this is the only promise that he will implement. He he. Rev he didn't uh, implement all the promises for progress Yemen uh, in all his life. But when he promised for something against Yemen, he do it. On the role of outside interference in Yemen, well, things get even more murky. Neither Ms. Karman nor the Prime Minister himself seem to know or be willing to admit whether the United States continues military activities in the country. You've received a lot of support from the United States, haven't you? No, we, we haven't. I don't think we have received anything. This support was given to the old uh, regime. So under the new transitional not, not so far, no. authorities? Nothing, nothing. Are the, is the United States, allow me to ask you, is the US carrying out, for example, any operations on Yemeni soil, any drone attacks? Well, uh, I, I, I'm not aware of that because this does not concern me as a civilian uh, unit. Sir, but you're civilian. the Prime Minister of Yemen. Yeah, Surely you should be aware of who's uh, carrying out activities yeah, in But this uh, goes under the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the authority of the uh, President and other military leaders. It's not under my control. But you're not even aware of what the United States are doing, even if it's not your decision. Surely you're aware whether the United States... I'm not aware of that at all. I'm not aware of it.
What is your understanding, for example, about the killing of Anwar al-Awlaqi? According to WikiLeaks, they that say... I heard about it, that I knew before, that uh, not officially, I knew from others that they were tracing Anwar al-Awlaqi. He was killed, his son was killed too. Was he killed by the US forces though, or was he killed by Yemeni forces? There seems to be some suggestions, at least through WikiLeaks, that he was killed by the Americans and the Yemenis said, we'll take We'll own up and take responsibility you, for this. You better you. address this question to a military uh, commander, I think. Well, Not I, to I, me, I'm, <laughs> I have no uh, accurate information about it. What would you say, sir, to viewers who might find it surprising that some of the civilian leaders like yourself in Yemen are apparently not aware and not in control of very serious aspects of Yemen's foreign policy, military policy, who is in control of Yemen then, if not the civilians? You know, this sort of arrangement uh, was there from before, not from now, I mean. I guess I would have to ask you, um, after speaking to the Prime Minister, why are Yemenis apparently hesitant to talk about what a foreign power may or may not be doing in their country? No, I don't think that. We are so transparent. We are so clear that we are... But I'm asking, do you think America is carrying out drone attacks in Yemen today? Yes or no? I don't know, but as, as I told you, that we are, we, yani we welcome any kind of partnership on fighting corruption, on fighting terrorists, on building our country, on uh, reconciliation, uh, restructure the army, in every way, not just with American, but also we say the same, the same phrases, that fighting Al-Qaeda is something very important to Yemeni people. I told the American people that it's, you have to trust Yemeni people and you will see that. When we ask the Prime Minister about his ability to keep his nation together, he gets increasingly and visibly irritated. How do you see the fight against Houthi rebels in the north, if we could shift to another yeah, front? You shouldn't ask me all these questions. Don't drag me. We want to resolve our problems in Yemen. Don't, uh, I mean, uh, let me say something that will aggrav aggravate our problems. We want, I want to say something that will help in re achieving national reconciliation. Okay, let's talk about national reconciliation yeah. then with, with the situation in the north. What, what is the government doing in terms of national reconciliation we in the North? We are doing our best. We are trying to convince everybody to participate in a national uh, 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 dialogue process. And uh, we are, I mean, uh, the reaction, the response is positive so far, not bad. So many uh, parties, so many factions are willing to participate. Do you see the hand of Iran in the disturbances in the north. Do you see that Iran is playing a role there? Uh, well, uh, we, uh, we have no strong uh, relations with uh, Iran and uh, we won't allow Iran or any other country to interfere in our own affairs. But do you... Thank you very much. This is enough. This is well, enough. I don't think... I don't think... think uh, <laughs> حوثيين قاعدة نحن ايش نصلح بلدنا أن تدخلنا في كلام For Ms. Karman, although she's convinced the country's new leadership is trying to do the right thing, she says she won't be silent until a new constitution is established and the government delivers on its promises. We will not leave the squares until we achieve all our goals. We see that it's opportunity of new Yemen. And we will not, we will not gain like this opportunity. We will, we will, we will uh, uh, build new Yemen inside these squares. It's now we have two years, uh, and th this is, I mean, this is a good years for for a strong placement, for a good placement. So we will not leave it. And they are now they are talking about they will uh, uh, convince the revolutionaries to leave the the squares. We tell them no, don't try. We will stay here until we guarantee the new constitution. Many viewers might ask, wasn't it difficult for a, a young lady, in particular in Yemen, to turn herself into an activist to be out there in the streets? If you decide to be part of the solution, 
not part of the problem, you will succeed. We saw the crisis, wars, poverty, uh, Al-Qaeda, disease, everything. So I can't just see it to my country. And we decided to, to don't listen to anybody tell us stop. No, we went in the first step and we are continuing our winning in the second steps, not just in Yemen, in all Arab countries, and not just in all Arab countries, it's on all over the world, for the people who are looking for the freedom and dignity. We gave a good sample that people just, yani, must not just see the, on the obstacles around them. They will succeed even, Ill, yani, even if they face a lot of problems around them. Tawakkul Karman, thanks so much for talking to Al Jazeera, it's been fascinating. You're welcome, Sam. Thank you so much.